Well, that's the old football rattle. And it works like this. You have a handle and a heavy piece that swings around. And as it does, you see there's a bit of wood acting as a spring in the middle. It gets caught up on the green cog and snaps back onto the next, next tooth. And when that does it fast, it goes, as you heard. Well, that's a good one. What about this one? It's a thing you can buy in the shop, same sort of thing. Pretty awful. We can do better than that at home with just bits of scrap stuff, like an old cotton reel, for starters. At least uh, a cotton reel of the right kind. Wooden cotton reels are going out of fashion, but they're being replaced, often as not, with things like this. It's a plastic cotton reel with six spokes, and they go all the way through. And get hold of one of those, and you've got yourself the basis of the rattle, because that's what's going to make the cog. At least it is if you cut the rim off and leave the spokes. I've got one in the vise, and I've nearly finished the cutting process. Let's do the last stroke, and you'll see what I mean. Use a hacksaw blade, it cuts through the plastic cleanly, and there we are. And if I take that out, you can see that, in comparison with the original cotton reel, all the rim is gone, and I'm left with a six-spoke sort of cogwheel. Well, I still need a handle and a weight and a frame and a middle flange. Let's see how we do all of that. The handle's pretty easily uh, done. You might be able to find a, a round pencil that just jams inside that, but I find that uh, thin doweling is the best. They're usually a loose fit, and you need a tight fit, so by wrapping masking tape or some sort of sticky tape around one end and getting it to just the right thickness, you'll find that at one point it will jam inside the cotton reel. That's what you want, a good tight fit. Well, I'll remember that, take it apart and get on with the frame, which is made of wire. Now, I've got a completed one to show you where we're going. Here it is, and you'll see that it's as wide as the cotton reel is long. In fact, a little bit wider, which stops it jamming on the ends. But the way you make that out of a coat hanger, it's pretty easy, but you can see that if you take the coat hanger and cut it, make sure you're allowed to have one of these, but the thin wire is just about the right sort of thickness for our job. You start off with the bend. That's the first part to do. Once you've done that, you then trim these legs so that they're the same length, make them pretty long, then you can't really get into trouble. There we are. A pair of pliers does that. And you have to turn those ends over so they'll go around the dowling. Now, you don't want it to be a tight fit. So instead of wrapping them around the dowling like that, wrap them around something just a little bit fatter. I found a steel rod, and it's going to be just the thing. Bend them around with the pliers, and the finished article will look like this. You see that it fits quite tightly on this steel rod, but very loosely on the dowling that's going to be the handle. There we are. Swings around with ease, and that's what you want. Notice that the arms are still the same length, and everything is still square. All right, so we can probably start to assemble it. We take the cog, and we take our piece of handle, and we do it like this. We put the handle through the loop on one side of the frame, then through the cog, and then through the other side of the frame, and keep it going until that tape jams in the middle. And that, you can see, is the beginning of the rattle. We're going to spin it like that. But for it to make a noise, there has to be a beater in the middle. You make that out of anything, really cardboard or bits of tin. But for my money, I reckon the best thing is the side of an old ice cream container. And you cut yourself a piece that just fits inside that frame and then trim the end to a point. And that point, of course, as you push it up, will engage in the cog. You watch. You can hear it beating even now. Not making a very good sound, so what you do to make it even better is to tape the piece of plastic in place. Masking tape's the best, and if it's still not loud enough, take the masking tape off again, cut the point off, and push it up a bit. Because the thicker that is, the louder the sound, but the harder it is to work the rattle. That'll take a bit of time, so I'll take this apart and assemble one that I've already made. First of all, I'll show you what it looks like. Here's the beater. In fact, to make a particularly good sound, I've used two pieces of plastic. One's flat, and the other has the point. Double the thickness, taped very tightly down, and that is a good crisp sound when it hits the cogwheel. The only other thing I had to do was to put a weight so that it swings round with its own momentum, and that's a lump of plasticine. You can use anything, but plasticine's easy. So let's, for the last time, assemble that. Cog in the middle, handle through, all the way through, Pull the tape into position so it jams, and you can see that it's the finished article. And that ought to work pretty well. As I swing it, that plasticine weight should carry everything around, and as it does it, 
the plastic tongue will beat one by one against the spokes of the cog. All I have to do is to swing it and see if it's going to go.